desire to get to that higher place with him. I don't know what you're willing to sacrifice to get to that higher place. If indeed for his glory you would do anything, you will forget about every distraction and just concentrate on him. David said, for that will not have a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. Will you go ahead and lift your worship and tell him for your glory? I would do anything just to see you to be all you as my king. Say, for your glory, I will do anything just to see you. To be hold, to be hold, you as my for your glory, for your glory, I will do anything, I will do anything, just to see you, just to see you, to be hold, to be hold, you as my for your glory, for your glory. Wanna be where peace is where you are, joy is where you are, salvation is where you are, healing is where you are, deliverance is where you are, abundance is where you are. I wanna be where you are. Arali kono kya pa kala safra kato ilake la masha rali lulu shabaro la 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 ya la ba kali ikala ba kala la ba la 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 shabala la kili la ba la 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 ikala ba shala la kala ba la 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 shabala ba la la ba ba la la kili la la Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Jesus, 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 I want to make you, 
I want to make you, make you smile, oh, make you smile, oh, make you proud. Oh. I want to talk. <laughs> anytime, anytime, anytime I appear before your throne. May I not be a castaway? Jesus. I can't take a ball of shalia ball of kalololosha. That's your ballosha. Jesus, Jesus, my love. Want to make you smile Want to make you proud Jesus Jesus my Lord Fais comme un rime Jesus Jesus If you're watching us online, will you go ahead and make him smile with your words? Will you present your bodies as living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable unto him? Will you ascribe greatness to this God? Will you touch his heart? Will you bless him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He 
And tell the Lord, there is none like you, and there is none like no one else can touch my life as you do. I could say, I could say, through eternity. Just want to seize this opportunity to welcome everyone to this time. I want to thank our host, Pastor Bidemi McMurdy, for this opportunity to bring God's word your way. I know many of you have not seen me in the teaching ministry, so she has co opted me to teach. As the Lord inspires my heart. And I want to thank her especially for being consistent with this vision. And I pray that the Lord that will that has kept her and brought her thus far will see her through the end of time. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will strengthen her hands on the plow. In the name of Jesus. She will yet give birth to greater visions. In Jesus' name. So, brethren, I'll be talking to you today on the power of worship. The power of worship. By the grace of God, I've been in the worship of the music ministry for over 20 years. But I can boldly say today that in the first 10 years of my life, in the choir I never understood what it means to be a worshipper or what worship was about and you know they say when the understanding of a thing is not known abuse is inevitable and so I can also boldly confess here today that for, for 10 years of being in the choir I was abusing worship because I never knew that worship was beyond the music. I never knew that worship was beyond the songs. Worship is a lifestyle of a believer. And so, I remember one day I had an encounter. And that encounter was when somebody confronted me with the question, What is worship? And I was just looking up and down. 
and I started blabbing. And that became my encounter, really. Because I had to go back home that day and I had to sit down with God. And what exactly have you called me to do? Oh, true, people could dance, people could shout whenever the songs were raised by me. But the truth is, as the song leader, I never understood what I was doing. I just was just singing because God gave me the voice. And I began to ask God some deep questions, which I'm going to be sharing with you by experience from the word of God and what the past 10 years of my life also has been working with God in worship. So I'm going to take my text today from John chapter 4, verse 22. John 4, 22, where that woman, that Samaritan woman had her encounter with Jesus. That is also my story. John 4, 22 says, if you have your Bible in your closet, those of you tuned in online, please make sure you are not distracted so that you can have a flow. John 4, 22 says, Okay, let's take it from verse 20. It says, Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews say that the place where we ought to worship is in Jerusalem at the temple. Jesus replied the woman, Believe me, a time is coming when God's kingdom when, God, God, when God's kingdom comes, when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem let me just stop there before we go on a time came last year when churches were shut down house of worships were closed down so this scripture was fulfilled in many lives because many people who thought that the only time that they could worship was when they go for midweek services when they go for Sunday services and it's praise and worship time, they lift up their hands so they were shut down. I hope their worship were not shut down because this is the exact case that Jesus painted to us. And Jesus went on and said, he said, that time comes when neither shall you go to worship in Jerusalem nor in the temple. And you do not know who you worship I, I began to look at the scripture many years ago I was trying to put myself in that woman's position this woman has been going to church let's just take hypothetically for about 10-15 years and she goes every Sunday every Wednesday to worship and yet the one she was going to worship was by the well sitting down and when the woman came the woman could not recognize the king of kings because she has never been a worshipper that's a simple reason she has never been a worshipper because if she had known the worship the one she has been going to worship by the time she cited Jesus by the well she would have gone on her face flat and this is the replica of the body of Christ. That good man represents many people in the body of Christ. We claim to go to the temple. We are of different denominations. And we claim to worship the almighty God. And yet when he speaks, we don't know his voice. When he appears, we don't know his face. When he instructs, we don't listen. And so I'm sure during the lockdown, many people were shut down from worship. In fact, Bible study is even worse. Because when you wake up, many people wake up to Netflix. They wake up to Instagram. They wake up to Facebook. Because they don't know the one they worship. So because the churches were shut down, their worship was shut down. 
And the Bible says in verse 23, But the time is coming, and that time is already here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For God is a spirit. This version says God is a source of life. He's the invisible maker. So those who worship him was, must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what is worship? I wrote down many things the Lord has spoken to my heart concerning worship. Worship is the act or the attribute of reference or referencing God. Worship is the total submission of our spirit, soul and body to the almighty God. Worship is the honor with extravagant love and extreme submission to God. And that's why I really love the songwriter. You see, when we understand what worship is, it will also inform the kind of songs we sing. We will not sing the songs because they sound nice in the ear. We will sing them because those songs align with the word of God. So I, I appreciate when Michael Smith sang When the music fades And all is stripped away Then I simply come Because I'm longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart <laughs> Father, I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required My Father, you search much deeper within To the way things are You look into my heart song it's a confession that submits to God that Lord I am sorry for the thing I have made worship many of us have made the wrong things out of worship and that's why whenever worship becomes commercial it's not of God it's not of God so I'll take you through what worship is about True worship defines where we place God in our lives and it also defines where God is on our priority list. I want to take that again. True worship defines where we place God in our hearts it also defines where we place God on our priority list. True worship is a matter of the heart expressed through a lifestyle of holiness. It is also the extravagant, extreme, excessive submission to the Almighty God. So just in case you've not been worshipping in spirit and in truth from your heart, and you have not submitted to God before we go ahead in this section I just want to invite you to make a decision today to be a true worshipper you know many of the times I sat back with the Lord and I said Lord what is the only thing that will make you happy with me I said son 
as long as I don't lose your worship. Because the day I lose your worship, you lose my focus. The day I lose your worship, you lose my focus. May the eyes of God not be taken away from us. The only constant factor that brings God's attention to man is worship. That's the only constant factor. And worship is in different forms. It's not about when they say, oh, it's praise and worship time. And that's the only time worship is about. No. Worship is a lifestyle. The lifestyle of worship is what many believers have not come to terms with. Because they are one person in church, they are another person at home. It's not true. So I'm going to take you through again the journey of worship as the Lord has led me. So the first question I want to ask us, brethren, is who should be worshipped? Who should be worshipped? Because indeed, many of us have raised altars unknown to us in our hearts. And our attention of worship is shifting. Many have shifted. Many have shifted away. The issue of worship is very important to God because our God is a jealous God. He's a jealous God. He doesn't want to compromise his attention whether with you or from you. God always seeks. That's why he said the Father is seeking those that will worship him in spirit and in truth not people who know the songs they know the song and they don't know the God of the songs they know the church they know the denominations they don't even know the God of those denominations because whenever we worship we have an encounter with God he gives us direction so who should be worshipped I'm sure many of you already know that answer. The Almighty God should be the only one. That's why in Exodus, he gave them one of the commandments that thou shalt have no other God before me. So we worship God because he is God. And that is it. Period. Our extravagant love and extreme submission to the Holy One flows out of the reality that God first loves us. He was the one that gave us his love. Even before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew. And he even paid the price ahead of time. It is highly appropriate to thank God for all the things he has done for us. However, true worship is shallow when it is just solemnly or acknowledging God because God is wealthy. You know, many of us come to God because of what we want. I remember one day I sat in a meeting with my father and the Lord. We were in a pastoral meeting. And as I sat there, it was a Wednesday. The Holy Spirit just came and took me out of that meeting. My body was there physically, but I was not there. And we were having our own meeting. And my pastor knew because he was the one presiding. He noticed I was I just zoned off. And he said, he said, son. He called me like three times. I didn't even know. He said, What's happening? said go and attend to the Lord he needs you so I, I stood up from that meeting because he already knows and I went out and the Holy Spirit said why do you worship me brethren I had to ask him for the answer I said Lord please tell me and that day the Lord gave me a song in that place of meeting with him I said Lord I worship you not for what I want but for who you are. Because you are bigger than all my problems. You are bigger than all my needs. You are bigger than anything I can ever ask you for. The Bible says in you all things consist. In you I live. In you I move. In you I have my being. And that day I sang the song back to the Lord. I worship you not for what I want but for who you are I worship you not for what I want but for who you are join me say now I worship you not for what I want <laughs> 
your true worship child of God is beyond the needs that will present to God many people come to God because oh they need the healing and after they are healed they are gone that's why when Jesus healed 10 of those people only one remember to come back to worship he actually the bible records that he came to say thank you but that was the form of worship how many times have we remembered to say thank you to god when he gave us those blessings as if the almighty god does not know no one that job made god proud Job made him so proud. As wealthy as Job was, when everything was stripped away, everything was taken away, two things happened in that scripture. One, the character of the wife was revealed. Those women who like to stay by their husbands because they are wealthy, Job's wife was the first to be recorded in the Bible. Because when the wealth was gone and the class was gone, the fame was gone, the accolades were gone. Her friends could no longer socialize. Her friends could no longer relate. People were no longer coming to their house to say, Madam, can you please give us food? Can you please lend us some money? Can you please give us some privileges? Can you please give us some food items? She was not receiving such attention again. She told her husband, will you not curse God and die? And Job responded, I know my Redeemer lives. Child of God, the wealth, the money, the fame is not what God is interested in. God is interested in the heart that will consistently seek Him. In spite of what happens, in the good times and in the bad times, God is still God. And that's why I agree with when Nathaniel Bassi said, You've got times and seasons in your hands. Jehovah, you call for light out of darkness. That's what he does. You don't need a man to be the God you are. Heal your mercy You've called me your own You are God You are God From the beginning to the end There's no place for argument oh. So child of God, the next question is How should we worship the Lord? Now that we know who should be worshipped, God has his precepts. God has his principles. You know, in Nigeria, there are ways different people worship their gods in different cultures. In, I'm sure that happens in different cultures all over the world too. But when we're talking about the almighty God, there is a way he wants to be worshipped. He doesn't want to be worshipped carelessly. And that's why when worship is going on in churches and you see the ushers struggling with people to make sure they are not distracted. Child of God is not supposed to be so. If you know your God, nobody should teach you how to worship Him. There is only one audience when it comes to worship. His name is Jesus. It's not about the congregation. It doesn't matter who is seated. It doesn't matter if your best friend is by your side. Once you can get his attention with worship, that's all you need. Clint Brown, one of my favorite writers, a worship leaders, was the one who sang that song that you don't need majestic choir with awesome voices raised. You don't need a congregation to offer me your praise. You don't even need a mighty orchestra to bless me with your song. You get my attention when you worship me alone. How should we worship our God? Number one, we must know the God we worship. How do we know this God? We must study the word. 
the word of God that I know today has informed the way I worship. David said, I will enter his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. If you can, you cannot come before God with worship and you are coming with complaints. The first thing you, have, you do, many believers will just go on their knees and say, Father, I am here to talk to you. Yesterday, I didn't eat before I slept. Two days ago, my mother called me that she's sick. <laughs> and they will reel out all their complaints to God. And I'm wondering, my mother, I'm wondering how God will be responding. Because that's not the precept he gave us. That's not the style. That's not the style he taught us. How can you come before the almighty God with complaints? Who told you he doesn't know? He wants a better response. And that response can only come with your worship. The fragrance of my words rose up to the Father lighting dungeons at where the response of my worship first it was fragrance then it turns to fire my worship is my response this is how I win my battles if your response is wrong your battles will continue So we must know the word of God. We must study the word of God. Number two. We must hear from God. Hey, child of God. It's very important that we know. That what we hear from him. Informs what we do. If we don't hear. We don't move. If we don't hear. We don't take a step. And this can only happen. First. When we know the God we worship and then we know how he should be approached. Excuse me, sir. There is a protocol in the realm of the spirit. You don't break it. You break it, they send you back. The, if the human race understands protocol, then this protocol that the human race has imbibed started from the spiritual realm. We must hear from him. Number three, we must pray constantly. Number four, we must also sing. The Bible talks about making melodies in your heart unto God. Number five, we must commune with God. We must commune. Because when we commune, we have a fellowship with him. Many of us don't have fellowship with God. We are God's instructors. Fathers, I'm going out. Guide me. Send four angels to take me back and front. As they go forward, they bring me backwards. They just instruct God and they get out. Number six, we must evangelize. Number seven, we must serve others. And that brings me to the next question. Where should worship be offered? where because I said in the beginning that many of us have limited our worship to a space where the people gather to pray the church, the fellowships worship should be offered first in the spirit realm because we are spirit beings our spirit must go back to our maker constantly to worship and that's why Jesus in John 4 22 told us that those that must worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Anything devoid of this is not worship. Anything short of this is not worship. If you like, sing the best of songs. If you like, sing 
the latest of songs, it does not equal to worship. So child of God, I want us to begin to have an understanding that worship, as it is patterned in the Bible, is about the God that made the heavens and the earth. What are the benefits of worship? Worship has benefits too. And I can tell you that I have seen the Lord's goodness as first of all his child and then a worship leader. Number one, our constant fellowship with God strengthens our worship. It strengthens our worship. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 3 we see that Another benefit is that the worship we give to God brings those that are far from God closer to God. Jesus said, if I be lifted high from the earth, I will draw men to myself. You know many of times, mama, we want to draw men to ourselves before we lift Jesus up. That's wrong. It's just the privilege to stand to take the microphone to be the one to lead. The truth is that all of us are going straight to the throne of grace with or without a song leader if we worship. If we worship. Number three, worship opens our spiritual sight. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6. Many people are blinded spiritually because their worship is shut down. If you want to see things in the spirit realm, go into the realm of worship. The Almighty God just opens it up. Because when you see God in your worship, He gives you direction. He opens you up. The channels of my spirit open up. I am with the Father. Open up. No boundaries, no limits. Open up. Oh, yes. Let deep call unto thee. Open up. Channels of my spirit. Father, open up, open up, no boundaries, no limits, open up, oh, let deep call unto thee. So our worship opens our spiritual sign. Worship gives birth to the prophetic. No wonder Elijah needed a Israel. He said, bring me a Israel. It just, it just opens you to some deep realms with God. Ah! I'll share two testimonies. I never knew that aspect until I started opening myself up to the Lord in some areas. One day we were in a meeting on Monday, this, this, this testimony, anytime I remember, it just blows me. In a meeting in one of the redeemed churches, and this was over 4,000 people, and we're called upon to lead worship, myself and my team. Two things happened that day, and that, this happened about six, seven years ago. Seven years that day, first of all, my voice, you couldn't hear me speak. I had gone for several administrations and my voice was closed up. My vocal cord shut down. So, if I, if I had said a word by your side, mama, you will not hear. It was that bad. And I had five minutes to go up to minister. And I said, Lord, did you bring me here to embarrass me? He didn't answer. 
So all of a sudden, the pastor went up and said, today we have one of God's servants and all the staffs, all the introductions, and said, receive Chigazi and Design Voices. And I just went boldly to the mic. And when I shouted, praise the Lord, the church did not even hear. Even to the microphone. And I told the Lord, it's your work I came here to do. I came to worship you. I did not come to worship these people. So, it's me and you on this altar. As soon as I started the first song, the heavens just opened. Pow! I can remember that seven minutes into that worship, Peter will remember. The Lord just gave me a word and said, there's somebody here. Your name is Josephine. Blah, 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 blah. And the Lord spoke. Mama, you won't believe in the crowd of 7,000, 4,000 people plus. There was only one Josephine. Child of God, make no mistake about it. When we worship in spirit and in truth, he opens the prophetic. He opens you up and shows you mysteries. One person in the entire congregation of 4,000 people. Josephine. One, just one woman. And that was the encounter God wanted on that day for that ministration. Our worship. There is only one audience in worship. We must not lose focus of him. It's Jesus. We must not lose focus of him. That's why you can be in your closet and worship and God just opens the heavens to you. It doesn't matter who is there. Many people who know me know that I don't even care whether you are. You can choose whatever position you like, but don't lose focus of the one you came to worship. So we can see that in Second Kings chapter three, verse fifteen, number five, worship brings healing. And as we worship you, your throne. And as we worship you, your throne. And as we worship you, your throne. Say, I'll put you in front, in front of my bed. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I'll make room for two. I'll make room for two, you and I, you and I, Jesus, you are all the matter. you are all the matter. I'll put you in front, I'll put you in front, in front. I just need to make a commitment to God to say, Lord, lead me and I will follow. There's somebody that needs to make a conscious decision on this day to say, Lord, I'm sorry for the thing I've made your worship. I'm sorry for diluting your worship. I'm sorry for misplacing your worship. Revelation chapter 4 the Bible talks about the 24 elders worshipping before the king of glory will you lift up your spirit will you lift up your soul and just bless the Lord let your soul bless him let your spirit exalt him give him glory give him glory whenever our souls worship beyond the song there's an encounter 
the Lord is refreshing the Lord is reviving the Lord is calling us back to the place of worship whenever we're in that place truly child of God it's difficult to want to leave it's not a place you want to rush in and rush out it's God's dwelling place <laughs> I want to be where you are Dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory in your presence. That's where I always want to be. Oh, I just want to be. I just want to be with you. So, Father, this is our confession to you on this day. And Lord, we want to be with you. We want to spend the most of our time worshiping you. Lord, indeed, we want to dedicate our lives once again to you. And to bring us back to the place of worship. Restore our altar of worship. Revive our altar of worship. Empower once again our altar of worship. That we may never lose focus of you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Somebody give God praise and shout a loud amen.